started. Okay. I'll just give everyone a moment to join before I start. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for this professional learning opportunity. I am Angela Lazar, Digital Project Coordinator from NCEA, and I will be facilitating this webinar today. Just a few housekeeping notes as everyone is joining in. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the Q&A window. And you can do that by hovering your mouse over the screen and you'll see a little pop-up bar on the bottom where it says Q&A, and you can submit your questions there. At the end of the session, I will provide a link to an online survey and how to receive a certificate of completion for today's webinar. And so for today's webinar, grow your teacher's knowledge of Catholicism. You'll get a baseline understanding of your teacher's knowledge and beliefs surrounding Catholic faith by exploring NCEA's information for growth for adults. Our speaker today is John Galvin, NCEA's Vice President of Assessments, previously directed schools in San Diego overseeing substantial enrollment growth and holds a BA in art and an MA in practical theology and an MED in educational leadership and also has 30 years in education. John's career spans administration, teaching, coaching, and campus ministry. And he also enjoys doing art for fun. Before I turn it over to our presenter, let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for wisdom and direction for teachers. There is so much that they can accomplish at the end of the school year. Give them the wisdom to know how to best meet the needs of each of their students. May they be able to receive help from parents, support staff, and volunteers to help run their classrooms smoothly and effectively. Give them direction and guidance to accomplish the tasks they need to do each day. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us today, John. Please feel free to take it away. webinar as well. Uh, something I've learned, as Angela said, after 30 years in Catholic education, uh, I administered the Acre for years and years as a Catholic high school religious studies chair. And the IFG was something I was aware of, but we never used it. And what I've discovered after joining NCA a little over a year ago, it's like our sleeping giant. It is an outstanding instrument to measure uh, faith formation and your faith formation programs, religious studies programs throughout your parish and schools. And so today we're going to be looking at the Information for Growth, or the IFG. As you may know, NCA RISE is NCEA's family of religious and community assessments. Uh, most of you are familiar with the ACRE. That's our assessment of Catholic religious education for students. And the IFG is essentially the ACRE equivalent for our adults, uh, not just religion teachers, but all teachers, staff, um, both at the parish and the school level. This past year, we added the Belonging Index in partnership with Springtide Research Institute. And the Belonging Index, particularly post-pandemic, it measures the degree that students, teachers, staff, and families feel like they are noticed, named, and known within the school community. I think it's important from the outset to define our goal. Our goal is never a competition or a comparison or anything punitive by having teachers take this assessment and perhaps uh, reveal not only what they know, but what they don't know. But our goal is to inform religious instruction based on what both kids and adults know, think about, and practice with regard to our Catholic faith. And ultimately, friends, I draw from the directory of catechesis. The definitive aim of catechesis is to put people not only in touch, but in communion, in intimacy with the person of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go pretty quickly through uh, what is IFG, how do you use it, and I do want to encourage you, if you've got follow-up questions or would like a, an individual consultation for your school or your parish or your diocese, reach out to me at any time. My contact number is a direct line to my cell phone. I'll provide all that uh, in just a short while. So the IFG assists in evaluating the effectiveness of school and parish religion educa education programs. It comes in three parts. The first is what you would expect, right? This is the head knowledge of Catholicism, assessment of the faith itself. What do they know uh, in terms of basic tenets of our beautiful Catholic faith? 
The second part is a survey of personal beliefs, attitudes, perceptions, practices. Think of this as the, the heart and the hands knowledge of Catholicism. And the third part of the IFG, which is distinct from the ACRE, if you're familiar with ACRE, it gathers information on interest for professional development and opportunities. And I'll address that in just a moment. So I recently retook the IFG and almost immediately after taking the online version, I received back my report. Now, uh, as Angela said, I do have a degree in Catholic theology. So I deliberately chose correct and incorrect questions to see, okay, how does this thing report back to us? And whether the, the item is answered correctly or incorrectly, IFG provides detailed reporting with correlations to the catechism of the Catholic Church. And you can see that here, right? Um, this informs instruction with connection to the primary source of our Catholic teaching and provides a teacher, if there's a deficiency of understanding, a springboard to go deeper into understanding this concept or you know, whatever the item might happen to be. Uh, with IFG reporting on the PDF that you would receive, uh, you can certainly see broad swaths of data aggregate. Uh, this you see reporting by domains, and you see where uh, the adults here, you know, scored you know relatively high in moral formation. But maybe we want to take a look at what we're doing to enhance their understanding of you know basic knowledge of the faith. And as you would also expect, you can drill down in individual items or questions. Um, within uh, all parts of the IFG. Uh, something that's new to NCA in the past year, and this comes with all of our assessments, is yes, you continue to receive a PDF report with your school's results, um, particularly for you school or parish leaders, you would see an aggregate of the adults who are taking this assessment. And instead of you know going through page and page after page in your, on that PDF, the online dashboard provides some built-in analytics. For example, you can look at, you know, aggregate data, how are they scoring as, as a whole in, uh, in all areas? Or let's say you want to open up the first pillar of the catechism, the profession of faith, the creed. You can see at a glance, what were the top 10 questions? Our adults are absolutely knocking it out of the park. They get this. But where do we need to grow uh, in their understanding? And that's something that you can see here with the bottom top, um, incorrect questions. If you're administering the I of G over time, uh, which is what we would uh, certainly recommend, you can track teachers' growth over a span of time. So here we see a sample school between 2018-19 and the 2023-24 school year. Um, they've grown 2%. This is, you know, during the pandemic. So this particular school was keeping their, their adults engaged um, in faith formation. And you can see how that has benefited their growth. In part two of the IFG, similar to the ACRE, we assess teachers or catechists actual attitudes, perceptions, beliefs, and practices regarding the Catholic faith. And within this same part two, you can check these personal responses against these personal responses against preferred responses, right? And so in looking at this, you'd want to ask what trends or patterns do I see emerging? And how is this informing our approach as a leadership team to the adult faith formation or professional learning in a school environment? In part three, IFG provides, uh, it provides information about topical interests to your teachers. And the way that this is reported to you is you can see the distribution frequency of what are the top areas that teachers may want to take a look at. Uh, for example, here you see apologetics. Um, also on the dashboard, uh, the, you know, the graphic visualization of this same data, you can see the larger boxes constitute those areas where the adults want to receive more, uh, more professional development. And what's interesting about this, you see prayer and spirituality on the left and forms of prayer. And looking at last year's ACRE data, um, one of the lowest scoring uh, domains on the ACRE was prayer and spirituality. There seemed to be a disconnect between what our students know about Catholic prayer and the rich faith tradition that we have and their actual exercise of that same faith. And so you can find correlations here if you're also administering the ACRE. So the bottom line, what does IFG provide as well as NCA RISE? One, an understanding of what both students and adults alike know and what they feel about the faith. Because something that can't 
catechize unless we evangelize. We have to witness, but we have to get a peek under the tent of the adult culture of everybody who's charged to drive that mission. Certainly, you get information to better inform religion teachers and provide better religion instruction. Um, I know as a, as a former uh, Catholic high school religion teacher, and I also taught art on the side, um, I once had a, a veteran teacher tell me when I was a new teacher, um, he said to me, John, no good can ever come from leaving your classroom. I thought, no, we need to break out of those silos. And one thing I've learned as a longtime NCA member is NCA has the ability to convene people who are doing what you're doing from across the country. And I think that's a tremendous benefit uh, that we can build around our IFG and ACRE provide comprehensive contextual curriculum agnostic religion assessments to measure across your school and your parishes. Um, something I'm not going to go into a, a deep dive on this, but for the past decade, I've been captivated by the growing religious disaffiliation that we're seeing in our country. And again, friends, we cannot grow what we don't measure. Data to be used in decision-making, strategic planning. I'm going to address in a moment how IFG Acre can help you with your accreditation protocols and looking at the uh, national standards and benchmarks for effective Catholic schools. And think about more united Catholic school communities. Um, I hate to keep I hate to keep banging on the pandemic, but friends, we saw schools and parishes um, the doors shuttered for you know a year in some cases. And so, you know, how do we measure the health and vitality of our Catholic communities? A deeper drill into that same Catholic identity and mission, NCA RISE can help you measure that. So if you're a Catholic school, you're undoubtedly familiar with the NESBEX, and maybe you haven't gone deep into the NESBEX. Um, these are the national standards and benchmarks for effective Catholic schools. These were designed uh, in, in their in their inception in partnership with Boston College and Loyola uh, Chicago University, and they enlisted a number of practitioners across the country. As a former religion teacher, I remember flying out to uh, Chicago to engage in some of the initial development of the NESBEX. And our religion assessments uh, provided by NCA can really help you uh, really help you nail the mission and Catholic identity piece. Many of your accreditation protocols, like, you know, we in the West, uh, WCEA, uh, there's a new um, uh, pre-K-12 protocol that's aligned to these same standards and benchmarks. But before we get to that, you know, we have to ask, um, do teachers have a degree or certification in theology? Are they confident in the classroom? How are they prepared to teach religion? Now, you and I both know teachers are really hard to come by right now. Um, we've seen a decline in the teaching profession over the last three decades. And so getting qualified teachers uh, is one thing, but getting Catholic mission center teachers is a whole nother, is a whole nother challenge. You, you know, currently we're seeing inexperienced or out of field teachers, you know, at the, at the front of our classroom. So what do we do? We need to ask questions as leaders. We need to seek answers and provide support for our people. Learn, support, collaborate. I want to I want to close by looking at a, a couple of the standards from the Nesbex. Um, starting with standard two here, uh, a religion teacher focus. Right, the religious education curriculum instruction it meets the religious education requirements and standards of the archdiocese, and that begs the question too. I've consulted a number of dioceses where they're either refining, developing, or um, revisiting their religion standards for the diocese. Our religion class is an integral part of the academic program where kids are in a religion class, let's say at the high school, every semester, all four years. And are the faculty charged to teach religion, are they meeting diocesan requirements for academic and catechetical preparation, certification, all of that? Again, looking at that same standard too and its benchmarks, this is a focus on all teachers, right? So the school's Catholic identity, um, is it infused into all subjects? I've often joked, but it's no joke. What does Catholic math look like? Well, there's ways of tackling that. And we've got great Catholic school math teachers that are doing just that. Uh, is faculty using scripture in our rich Catholic tradition uh, to inform all subjects? That, that's great collaboration across subject areas, or if you're in an elementary school, uh, working vertically with those grade level teachers. 
uh, looking at visual and performing arts, music and art, architecture, are they expressing Catholic culture and faith in what they're doing? As a former high school art teacher, that was something I took great pride in. There was lots of opportunity to witness and to engage our kids in the faith. And then finally, Catholic social teaching, is this an essential element of the curriculum of the entire school? Looking at standard four, you know, does the school provide retreats and other spiritual experience on a regular basis for all faculty and staff? And is the school assisting parents and guardians in their role as primary educators of their children in the faith? Um, we have a we have a great opportunity in Catholic schools right now because across the country, during the pandemic, we saw a, an incredible boost in enrollment. Many of those who came into our schools, maybe they came because the doors were simply open, but they came. Many of them are non-Catholic. We have an opportunity to evangelize and catechize those people to become a part of our faith family. So how are we doing that? And how are we equipping the adults that we employ, regardless of what their role is, right? From the maintenance person to the president of the school, is everybody taking on some of that responsibility and understands that role? Uh, being a witness to this faith. Looking at standard four, again, um, is the school collaborating with other Catholic institutions to advance our shared mission? Are we providing opportunities for parent, parents and guardians to grow in the knowledge and practice of the faith? Are all adults on campus participating in Christian, Christian service programs? And are all the adults on campus visibly supporting the faith life of that school community? And friends, I'm not a statistician, I'm not a psychometrician, but when I look at data, I, I always believe it begins with wonder. I wonder why this, and I wonder if that, I wonder if we try this, what would be the impact? And again, IFG can track those kinds of implementations over time. So looking at part two, right, the affective data that your IFG provides, think about your mission statement. What do you notice in your IFG data that talks about the culture of the adults within the school? Are they getting it? And how might this data relate to your school's mission? How does the school's mission support the experience of the adults on that campus? And how might this data relate came um, subsequently are these rubrics, right? So you don't have to guess what meeting the standard looks like. Looking at the rubrics, you know, they're didactic. It tells you exactly what this should look like in each one of the benchmarks. And finally, I came into this, as Angela said, I'm 30 years now in Catholic education, and I started my career as a professional illustrator. Um, and God had a different plan for me. And from the very beginning, I feel like this mission has not changed. And that's, we want our kids, we want all those who step foot on our parish property or our campuses to have a transformative encounter with the living God through Jesus Christ. And with that, I'm going to close and turn it back over to my good friend, Angela. Friends, any uh, any other information you need, please feel free to reach out to me. My email is below there. You can reach me at jgalvan at ncea.org, or you can go to ncearise.org, look at the FAQs. You can demo each of these assessments. Um, you can look at the pricing that is fully disclosed uh, for all of our assessments at NCA. And with that, I want to say uh, God bless you for all you do for all those you serve. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. We appreciate your presentation. That was excellent. So I'll just close it off now. I actually input the link to the certificate of completion that I mentioned previously. And it's just a link that can you can use to provide feedback for our webinars. And um, we use this feedback to improve any of our future services. So if you could please fill that out, it should take no more than five minutes to complete. Um, the survey will need in order for you to receive the certificate of completion you'll need to input your email and name into the survey so uh, please do that and it's automated so it should be sent directly to your email and if it's not please check your spam and um, to learn more about any upcoming webinars please visit ncea.org webinar and thank you so much for attending our webinar today and thank you again john for such an excellent presentation you did a wonderful job 
Yeah, God bless you, friends. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you.